Why is the stock market crashing? Why does it continue to repeatedly crash as if we were playing with crash cars? What is the big short I'm using to play and profit from this vicious bear market? Hang on. This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Hey everybody, how are you doing with this wild and crazy market? Uh, it seems the year to date, we go up the escalator of it tries to recover and tries to rally and go forward. Uh, but then ultimately that peters out and then it crashes. And I think we're like on the third or fourth escalator up and, and now we're on the way down again. You know, this is really getting old. It's the old story of uh, lower highs and lower lows. And this fourth, this fourth time could be, uh, you know, a major low. Uh, and I'm thinking that it could go down to 3,200 but that's that's if it's reasonable. If it's not reasonable, the S and P uh, 500 could go down to like 2,800. Uh, so I, I I think we've got a ways to go. We've been hearing that all year. We think it's over, and oh no, we got another 20% to go. I guess that's what I'm saying is that we got at least another 20% to go, maybe 30%. Uh, so I'm, I've taken to playing the SQQQ, uh, which is uh, shorting the QQQ, which is the 100 largest companies on the, on the NASDAQ, uh, and is triple leveraged. And so for every uh, dollar that the QQQ goes down, you make $3. And I also pay, play the rallies. <laughs> yes, I am crazy. Uh, when it's when it's going up in rally mode, uh, I I play the TQQQ, which is triple leveraged on the bullish side. For every dollar that the QQQ goes up, you make three dollars. And this can lead to a split personality, <laughs> but I think I, I'm staying together somehow because they only do one of these at a time because it is very difficult to change your mindset uh, from uh, going up like an escalator and then going down like an elevator. When, it, when it's rallying, I'm more patient and will play the TQQQ uh, for maybe a week or, or maybe two at a time. Uh, when it's going down, it's day trading. And it's basically, you got to watch it every minute because uh, markets tend to go up like an escalator, but they tend to go down like an elevator. And that's why the VIX, uh, a measure of volatility, is more volatile with bear markets because it has that tendency to drop much faster than it goes up. Uh, so when the VIX is above 25, you're definitely in a bear market. When it's below 20, you're, you're definitely in a bull market. When it's between 20 and 25, it depends on which direction it's heading. If it's going like from 20 to 23, you're in a bear market. If it's like at 24 and going down to 21, you're you're in a bull market uh, and that's the way I've, I've been playing it and it's been pretty successful uh, so I, I intend to keep doing it that that way and one thing about it is in a bear market you always want to be closing if you make a significant you actually kind of want to have goals in your mind uh, how much you want to make the best setup is is for uh, SQQQ to be negative on the day and then all of a sudden it starts improving okay that that is the ideal setup at least that's what's been very successful for me uh, because it's much more likely to go up if it, especially if it's gone down significantly when the, when the 
the underlying uh, bear market trend is established. And we are pretty well established. Uh, the way the market's been acting is crazy. And let me tell you why. The market has been focused on inflation because the Federal Reserve is focused on inflation. And so anything that promoted inflation, any good news that promoted inflation, high employment promotes inflation. The stock market doing well promotes inflation. You can't have good news if you're fighting inflation with the Federal Reserve on the warpath. So any good news, any sign to signs of bullishness uh, that the Federal Reserve hates and it strengthens their resolve to absolutely crush the stock market. Okay, so uh, you see this and any good news, oh my God, the, the Fed's going to be even more hawkish. And so this stock market goes down. Uh, good news is bad news. And I hate that stage of the market because you get these little feeble rallies. Yeah, you can ride them up a little bit, but you got to get out of them because the underlying trend is bearish. And so that's not going to work out. And then we have the phenomenon of it's changing, okay? It's changing where good news is still bad news, okay? We don't want inflation to run away. But now, if the good news is, is too, is, is too, let's say if they tamp down inflation too much, that's now becoming a sign of a coming recession. The Fed is being too successful in tamping down uh, economic growth. Okay, and what, and when you're pushing down economic growth like that, that's going to lead to recession. So the good news on inflation, uh, to a de it's good to a degree, uh, but if it's if it's uh, pushes down inflation too much. Oh no, that's more of a sign of a recession. It's working too good what they're trying to do. And so the economy must be going to take a big hit. And then you get the fear of deflation. And let me tell you, we're worried about inflation. There's nothing worse than deflation. Deflation is what led to the Great Depression in the 1930s. And so deflation is, makes inflation fears look like nothing, okay? Uh, so if, if we have inflation running wild, that is bad news. But now if we're too successful in knocking inflation down, that means they're tanking the economy. We're going to have a recession. The stock market never does well in a recession. So it's bad news. So whatever news you get is going to be bad news for a while. There's no getting around it. And, and so it's t in my mind, this is my opinion. This is what I'm doing. Uh, you have to make your own decisions uh, for your own situation. For many people, the best thing to do is just to stay out of the market. The interest rates are higher. Get some interest and wait for things to get better. That's one thing to do. The easy thing to do is to short the market. The easiest short is the SQQQ. You don't have to do anything. You buy the fund. They triple leverage it. They do all the hard stuff. You just watch the price and get in and out. And that's that's easy. That's what's made money for me. Uh, Basically, I end up losing money trying to buy stocks and, and then and then I make it up with SQQQ. I'm sick of trying to create a portfolio that goes nowhere. So I'm just going to do SQQQ. <laughs> OK, maybe I'll ride a rally up once in a while if that happens again. And it's possible it happens again because it's happened three times already. OK, history tends to repeat itself. Not exactly. But as Mark Twain says, it tends to rhyme. <laughs> OK, and it's it's not the kind of poetry I, I particularly like. <laughs>
And the news from the immediate future will continue to be bad. Whether it's good or bad, it'll be bad. <laughs> okay, so at least we have that cleared up for us. We went through the stage here for a while where uh, bad news was good news, but now bad news is bad news and good news is bad news. So it's all bad. So it's all going to tank. And we know this because the two-year bond and the 10-year bond are inverted. Uh, the 10 year bond, you get three and a half percent. The two year bond, you get like four and a quarter percent, maybe four and a half percent, depending on the day. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's ridiculous that you get more for lending your money out for two years than for lending it out for 10 years. But this is the times we, we, we live in. And basically, what the 10 year bond is saying that interest rates are eventually going to come down because the Fed is going to tank the market. Uh, it's it's going to make inflation go down, which will make the stock market go down eventually. The recent inflation numbers came out and the headline uh, CPI, the Consumer Price Index, came in at 7%. And the core uh, CPI, which excludes energy uh, and house, energy and groceries, uh, the, the two things you need to live, that's all. They just exclude those, okay? But the reason they exclude those is uh, energy and food prices uh, tend to change more rapidly, and they want to get to the more stable uh, prices and see if they are changing. And so core inflation tends to be stickier, and that came in lower than expected. It came in at 6%. And oh, that's good news. And, and everybody, everybody was just waiting with <laughs> finger on the trigger uh, to, to go into TQQQ, uh, which, which I did. And it shot up like a rocket to begin with. And then for the rest of the day, it went down, okay, and, and lost nearly everything that it gained in the early going. Uh, so when that news came out, it came out before the market, and you can trade in the pre-market, which I do, and and it just it shot up like it was going to the moon, and and everybody was just hey, I I hope I got in on the trade because it went so fast, okay? But I got in on the trade, yay! And it shot up like a rocket, and the rest of the day you would have made more money by being an SQQQ and shorting it from the top. You know, and you just want to throw up your hands at that point. Because the what happened is they saw the inflation numbers came down. Oh, that's good news. Everybody's happy. But then it's the growing realization. Geez, they came in lower than expected. Maybe it's working too good. Maybe he's got, got, he's tanking the economy. Because there's a delayed effect between when they start increasing interest rates, there's like a six month lag at least before it really bites into the economy. And so we got all these uh, increases, monthly increases that are coming in at a six month lag. And the prediction is that it's really gonna hit us at some point. And so again, it's all bad news. So non-farm payrolls came in higher than expected. Isn't that good news? The economy's doing good. Oh, God, no, that's bad news. Inflation is going to be worse, and the Federal Reserve will raise the interest rates even higher for longer. That's terrible news. And then you got oil. The price of oil went down. Oh, that's, that's good news. But wait, why did it go down? It went down because demand went down because people have less money to spend. It, it, good news is bad news. Bad news is bad news. It's all bad news. We have this all settled for us uh, until uh, th they allow some good news to happen and they won't allow that to happen until we have a recession and put prices into some kind of order. 
So let me illustrate to you how my year has gone with SQQQ, okay? Now, SQQ moves the opposite. When, when there's uh, good news, it goes down. SQQQ is your betting on bad news, okay? So uh, when the year starts out, uh, there's uh, some bad news. Uh, and so SQQ goes up, and then there's good news. Oh, no, it's going down. But, but then there's bad news, and it takes off again. And then there's good news, and so it goes down. And then there's, there's bad news, so then it really takes off. Okay, and then there's good news, and it goes down, the market rallies, and now we're starting up with uh, there's bad news, and good news is bad news, and I think it's going to end up going into the 60s. Uh, so that's the way my year has been. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already done that, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. I'm hoping someday we can return to, to making bullish portfolios, but that time is not now. We need the war in Ukraine to end uh, it's somehow, some way. Uh, God help us with that. Uh, we need the economy to get straightened out. Uh, I hope uh, Powell uh, continues to make wise decision. Uh, he seems to be doing a reasonable job given the circumstances. They waited too long and now they're trying to recover from that mistake. Uh, but I think it's possible we could have a softish landing, uh, but it's not likely. It's uh, We're likely to have a moderate recession uh, to reset prices, which will be good in the long run. And eventually we'll be able to make bullish uh, portfolios. But for now, I think uh, for me, it's it's using inverse funds just because it's, it's so easy. And the easiest of all is SQQQ, which contains all the FANG stocks, the Apples, the Amazons, the Alphabets, the Googles, <laughs> the Facebook, the Meta, you know, plus Microsoft, plus Tesla, all the biggies. <clears throat> and they're going down, and Tesla has really been going down. Uh, you know, it's it hasn't been able to hold 150. Well, it's holding 150, but just barely. You know, I never thought we would see it go this low, and it's possible we could go towards 100. And I I couldn't believe myself saying that a year ago, but that's where we are now. And Apple isn't doing much better. It's in the 134. Oh boy, I don't, didn't think it's seen the 130s for a while. And I think Apple is going to see the 120s or worse. Uh, so what we ha have in front of us isn't pleasant. It's not conducive to bullishness, which is my preferred mode. But I'm forced into this inverse uh, fund shorting uh, because it's the only way I, I've been able to make money and quite a bit of money. <laughs> so I'm crying all the way to the bank, uh, but I, I think I'm going to keep on doing this, of course. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, when it's bullish time, I, I will flip on a dime, you know, I, I can switch around. I can go both ways, as they say. So thanks for listening and watching. Uh, be sure to smash that like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already done that. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and good luck to us all. Uh, hopefully we can get out of this economic mess. Uh, the war ends and we can return to a more normal life, which hasn't been possible for the last couple of years, right? So thank you.